World of Horror, a roguelike horror RPG released in early 2020. Inspired by the works of Junji Ito and H.P. Lovecraft, this game involves you taking on the role of one of many protagonists and guiding them through a series of investigations. In this video, I'm going to be going over the core mechanics of the game and then go over each of the characters in a bit of detail and how I recommend you use them. If you already know how the game works and have only come here for the characters, then you can skip to the timestamp on the screen right now. If you know the characters already, then, well, th what are you even doing here? Get out! Okay, as explained very briefly in the intro, you get randomly selected a character, a background, and an old god. These three factors can massively affect the playthrough, but probably the most important one is which of the five old gods you can be given. Goizo is an old god who likes snatching people into mirrors. This causes wrestling to be more risky as it produces more doom, a mechanic I will get onto in a second. Itoto is the reason the Library of Alexandria burned down, meaning you and your opponents will do increased damage permanently. Aturasu Nasa is the spider god, his giant cobwebs prevent you from fleeing combat. Next up is... Uh, oh right, that's it, yeah, I was struggling enough pronouncing the names as it is, but this is just ridiculous. I'm, I'm just gonna give nicknames to everything in this game from now on. 1984 is a big old eye in the sky. It allows you to cast spells easily without getting spooked. Once again, another thing that I will explain in a moment. And finally, there is a big fishy fellow who has an irresistible gaze. He also seems to like playing Simon Says as he likes giving commands. If you choose not to follow these instructions, he will get very angry. Now you've gone through the introduction of being randomly assigned your player, background, and old god, or chosen them if you customise the playthrough, you can finally start. In this game there are three different numbers you need to keep track of, Stamina, Reason and Doom. Stamina is your physical health, if it drops to zero, you die. Reason is your mental health, if it drops to zero, you get sent to a mental hospital and can no longer continue your investigations, leading to a game over. Doom represents how long is left until the old god is summoned. If it reaches 100%, they come to visit the town and destroy it or in the fish and chips god's case, make the town a tad more moist. So with these basic rules, you probably think this game is about surviving as long as you can, right? Wrong. In fact, there is a way you can beat this game and it's shown right from the first screen. A spooky abandoned lighthouse where the ritual to summon the old god is taking place. If you try to go in straight away, you'll find there are five padlocks on the door and you're going to need some keys to get in. You get the five keys in this game by solving five different mysteries plaguing your town. There are several different mysteries in the game, and the five you get will be randomised in each playthrough. In each of these mysteries there are also multiple endings, and depending on which endings you get, your playthrough can be altered. For example, taking the coward's way out of a mystery and just running will most likely make the game serve you a big fat thumbs down with a side dish of extra do. While on your investigation runs, you will encounter a variety of random events which may help or hinder you. You will often have to make a choice in these events, which, depending on the choice, will result in you having to make a roll on a stat. The stats in this game are Strength, Dexterity, Perception, Knowledge, Charisma, and Luck. While luck isn't displayed, it's always 6 by default, and instead the game is showing you your funds, which you can use to buy different items during your investigations. There are many different ways to increase your stats. You can get stat boosts from different equipment and spells, but the most common way is to level up. You can level up in this game once you reach 100 XP, in which you are allowed to choose one perk to give your character, as well as a stat boost. You are given the choice of three random perks from a pool of six generic perks and three or four other perks depending on which character you're playing as. All of the generic perks give plus one to a specific stat and sometimes open up useful other options in certain events. For example, the quick thinking perks gives plus one to dexterity and allows you to get out of some events easily without being punished. XP can be obtained from exploring, completing mysteries, and defeating enemies in combat. But Beansley, I like the sound of a good fight. How does combat work in this fine game? Well, that's what I'm going to go over right now. Combat in this game, like most other RPGs, is turn-based. However, you don't just get to pick an action, you are given an amount of time to slot in several different actions of your choice. There are many options here in combat which fall into one of four categories. Offensive, Defensive, Support, and Spiritual. Offensive is the main type of action you're going to be using, as you become victorious in combat by reducing your enemy's HP to zero. Your default attack is a kick. This is somewhat fast, but barely does any damage, so you're probably going to want to have a weapon. If you do have a weapon equipped, you can either do a normal attack or a strong attack, where the latter does more damage but takes up more turn time. Remember the stats I talked about previously? Well each weapon's speed in this game is determined by a stat. The higher your stat of a weapon, the faster you can attack with it. If you're wielding a gun, you're also given the option to fire it, provided you have the ammunition. However, keep in mind that if you choose to shoot, you'll be a lot slower in combat for the rest of the mystery due to your ears ringing. If you want to make your attacks more accurate, you can spend some time to prepare an attack, making the next one guaranteed to hit. If you don't want to dedicate that amount of time, but still want to be more accurate, you can use an attack boost, which only boosts the next attack's chance to hit by 10%, but it is far quicker. You can stack this effect as well if you've got a bit of room to slot in multiple boosts. Support actions can be used to help give you the edge in combat in clever ways. For example, if you don't have a weapon, you can spend some time looking for one on the ground, which will either allow you to find a broken bottle or a branch, 
Well, both of these are not the best weapons. They're better than nothing and may allow you to actually damage your foe rather than just flailing your limbs like an eddy player. If you have an ally with you, whether it's from a mystery, asking around in the schoolyard, or given to you by some random guy in a balaclava, you can ask them to distract the enemy. Doing this will have a 70% chance to increase the speed of your combat actions for the rest of the combat, or a 30% chance for the ally to die. Overall, a pretty risky investment. If you have high knowledge and plenty of XP to spare, you can spend 5 XP to increase your chance to hit by 10% for the rest of the combat. As a last ditch effort, if your stamina or reason is below 4, you can activate Desperate Struggle. This is only usable once per combat and doubles the damage you deal with melee on the turn you use it. Defensive actions are, as the name implies, used to defend yourself from the enemy if your stamina and reason are looking a bit low. The main ways to defend yourself are through either dodging the attack or bracing for impact. Using the dodge action causes the enemy to have a 40% chance to miss their next attack. The time taken to dodge is reduced the higher your dexterity. Bracing for impact causes the next enemy's attack to do half of its usual damage rounded down. This action is faster the higher your strength. If you're really feeling like you can't take a fight, you can run away from an encounter at the cost of doom being raised by 5%. This is a very good option if you are about to die, but it won't work in boss fights and not at all if Weber is the old god. Alongside these cowardly tactics, you can be an absolute sigma male and just take a moment to sit down and think about what Obama's last name is. Doing so will sacrifice two stamina and give you one reason in return. Very handy for if your two types of health are uneven. Speaking of your health, there are many different enemies you can encounter, each with a damage type. The damage types can be stamina, reason, or both. There's even some enemies which just increase doom, implying they just groove on the spot and waste time with their turn. There are also several different types of enemies. Beasts, eldritch, human, plants, undead, vampires, and most unique one, ghosts. Ghost enemies cannot be fought normally and instead can only be fought spiritually, hence why I left talking about the spiritual part of combat until here. Against ghosts, your basic attack action here is severing their ties to your world. This deals damage based on your weapon's damage and your knowledge. It's also guaranteed to hit. If you have funds to spare, you can give the ghost a few shekels, which does damage to them based on your knowledge. If you have a bad weapon and don't have the funds to spare, you can attempt casting an exorcism. This can be done with the clap and bow command to the sequence of five. If you get it right, you'll immediately defeat the ghost. Get it wrong, and you've wasted your turn. However, you will be told how many parts of the sequence you got correct, so you could try again with that knowledge or note it down for a future ghost fight, as the exorcism sequence only changes for a new playthrough. Rather than thinking about Obama's name with Meditate, you could do the opposite and pray for the answer. Doing so will regain one stamina at the cost of two reason. Using both pray and meditate in the correct scenarios to balance out your stats can really save your playthrough. After defeating an enemy, as mentioned previously, you gain some experience and sometimes can receive a specific item. Make sure you carefully remember who you fought though, as this will be helpful in the final part of the game. Okay, now you've fought your way through 5 different mysteries, you now have the 5 keys ready to open up the lighthouse and make your ascent up the many steps. You are given the option to spend 2 doom as many times as needed to rest up and gain 1 stamina and reason. However, ascending the lighthouse will still produce doom, so don't go passing out at the bottom of the lighthouse just for the fishy god to drown you at the last second. The climb of the lighthouse is going to contain 5 different events, some of which will test your stats, equipment, combat capabilities, and even your own memory, by asking the player about the order of mysteries investigated and enemies encountered. So before you go up, make sure your stats are balanced, your weapons are solid, and your mind is in investigation mode rather than surname mode. With all this in check, you should be able to reach the top and be victorious. Now, that sounds pretty easy on paper, but you've got to select a character to do all this with first. So let's have a look at them, shall we? I put a spell on you. Kadabra is a transfer student who is good friends with a bunch of spooky ghosts. Thanks to this, she has a good knowledge of the arcane and gets to start with a random spell. Well, this is kind of the perfect time to talk about spells as I did kind of forget to mention them in the first few sections. There are many different spells in the game, all with a variety of powerful effects. However, a spell is most likely going to come with a cost for casting them, with the most common cost being your reason. The only exception to this is with Big Brother as the Old God, as they allow you to cast spells without getting your mental destroyed, at the cost of some zoom being raised instead. At any point, you can choose to forget a spell which will grant you one reason for doing so. Since there are many different types of spell, I'm going to break them down into three categories. Generic, Combat and Rituals. Generic spells can often be used at any time to provide a helpful effect. A good example of this would be Regeneration, in which you pay 2 Reason, or increase Doom by 2% if you're living in George Orwell's universe, to gain 2 Stamina. You can use this during your investigations, or in battle at the cost of no combat time whatsoever. Combat spells can only be used when you're in battle. An example of this would be Ashen Contract, in which you pay 7 Doom to Agent 47 in order for him to track a briefcase at a non-Eldritch enemy, killing them instantly. A less brutal example would be Mind Drain, in which you pay 2 Reason to deal 3 damage to an enemy, costing no combat time at all. Rituals are spells which often cost quite a lot to cast, but they give you a permanent buff throughout the playthrough. 
For example, Ancestral Strength boosts all your damage by one in return for paying for reason. You can only have one ritual active at a time, and casting another will replace the old one. Okay, with that basic description of spells out of the way, you should use them in moderation. Otherwise your mentor will dissolve into the state of an average relatives. Instead, use her knowledge to your advantage and invest in the scalpel at the pharmacy to slice the hell out of your foes. With your high knowledge, you will also have no problem severing ghosts, as well as quickly analysing your foes to carve them up more accurately. Her first and probably least useful perk is Arcane Grasp, which grants you access to an additional two spell slots. Kind of unnecessary, as you most likely won't be carrying around more than four in the first place. Second Sight, on the other hand, is a very nice perk which allows you to do mad damage to ghosts and eldritch enemies, which is very handy since the majority of the enemies you're going to be fighting will be eldritch. Ghost Connection grants you a random spell at the end of each mystery, which is quite nice to have if you want some spells but don't want to waste any time reading through books in the library. Finally, we have Self Therapy, a perk which allows you to restore two reason rather than the usual one for getting spells. Using this alongside Ghost Connection will allow you to keep your reason reasonably high throughout your mysteries. <laughs> reasonably high? See what I did there? Ah, never mind. The Self Therapy perk combined with the library notes allows infinite cycling of spells as it only costs two reason to use the notes and you can just forget the spell that gives two reason back if it's not the spell you're looking for. Overall, Kiwi is a very knowledge based character and is very fun to try out if you want to experiment with the many different spells in the game. Step in time. After nearly getting drowned by a ghost, Aiko was determined to find out what's going on in this town. Since she was previously a swimming team captain, she doesn't have the knowledge of different rituals and ghosts, but instead has high strength and dexterity as well as a combat speed bonus, allowing her to destroy anything that gets in her way. Since she is a very combat focused character, you'll probably want to purchase a weapon straight away. A very good option would be to buy a snake knife from our dog friend downtown, or one of the many tools the hardware store has for sale. Basically, any weapon that either uses dexterity or strength she'll be very good with. Since she's going to be in a lot of fights, her perks mainly revolve around her performing better in battle and healing outside of combat. Her first perk is Discipline, which gives you one stamina back for every skill check you pass. This is somewhat useful in scenarios that will require you to either climb or lift something heavy since it will let you heal off of it. Her second and probably most useful perk is Fast Swimmer, which buffs her combat speed even further, allowing her to get a very large number of attacks out in one turn. This is one of those perks where you probably want to re-roll it to get it on your first level up since it's very strong. Next is Hot Bath, which increases the power of resting at home to regain 3 stamina and reason rather than 2, allowing you to easily heal up between investigating areas. Iko's final perk is Running Shoes, which reduces the penalty of fleeing combat to 3% doom rather than 5. This could be very useful against dangerous enemies early on, but isn't as good later when you're going to be an absolute beast in combat. Overall, Iko is a character you could build to be a very powerful fighter, but she may struggle when it comes to knowledge based checks. Haru is an all-round big guy who can wield the heaviest weapons, be a decent shot with firearms, and haggle down prices in shops. However, like an average Peckham citizen, he has a crippling cigarette addiction. As soon as Haru starts the game, he is already suffering from withdrawal symptoms, causing every move he makes in combat to take longer. To cure this, you're going to have to regularly purchase ciggies for the man in order to keep the cigarette meter above zero, so make sure you ransack the apartment at the start of the game to fuel his addiction. Thankfully though, every packet of cigarettes adds 10 to 12 ciggies to the meter, with the meter only going up by one for every area you investigate. Opening a packet of cigarettes also restores one reason and grants you access to nicotine rush until your meter hits zero. This replaces nicotine withdrawal and instead speeds up all your combat moves, making Harry quite a powerful fighter as well. If you've unlocked them, you can also buy foreign cigarettes for an extra fun, which instead restores two reasons that's 12 to 14 ciggies to the meter. Haru does start with a packet, however, so you won't have to go on a mad shopping spree straight away and can first focus on getting him a decent weapon from the hardware store. Weapon-wise, Haru will be pretty good with any weapons that use strength or perception. I personally like the shovel. While it's slow, it hits really hard and gets you some doubloons after defeating an enemy, money which you can use to destroy Haru's lungs even further. But overall, most weapons in the hardware store are pretty decent, so I'd say it's up to your personal preference what you pick. Alongside nicotine rush from his cigarettes, Harrow also gets Hard Knock, which gives him a flat plus one bonus to damage while he's smoking. Some of his perks also help buff his damage, with the other half helping him get more cigarettes. Harrow's first perk is Core Strength, which gives him a flat plus one to damage. This stacking with Hard Knock allows you to get some spicy smacks out. His next perk is Close Quarter Combat Training, which buffs his melee damage with firearms by one. This is essentially a worse version of core strength, but stacking it alongside hard knock allows you to use firearms more effectively and save the ammunition for dire situations. Next up is Irazumi, which lowers the prices of every item in the game by one to a minimum of one fund. This is very handy for getting lots of ciggies at an affordable price, allowing you to save your money from more expensive items such as a powerful weapon or tool. Hyrule's final perk is Yakuza card, which opens up an extra item slot in every shop and allows them to sell illicit items. Illicit items are usually things like firearms and general suspicious items that you can't just slap on eBay. With this card, however, Haru can sell these, often for a large sum of money. Overall, Haru is a very strong lad who hits real hard and allows you to save money. However, in the early game you may have to find new ways of obtaining funds to prevent him from getting nicotine withdrawal. 
With Kiri's main stat being knowledge, Aiko's being dexterity, and Haru's being strength, Mizuki's main stat is charisma. But this must make her quite bad, right? There's no weapons in the game which use charisma. How is she meant to defend herself? Well, there are several other ways you could use charisma to your advantage. Thanks to Mizuki being a TikTok sensation, she can recruit allies from the schoolyard very easily. Most of these allies will provide you with helpful buffs, but some may just hinder you by lowering your stats. While you may be tempted to let them go straight away, you can actually use them to distract the enemy. Best case scenario, all your moves go faster. Worst case, your ally dies and your stats go back up to normal. It's a win-win situation. Alongside recruiting allies, your charisma will also help you get out of a handful of events on scale. Your way with words will even help you net some free items in some scenarios. Without any perks, Mizuki is pretty weak early game. However, once you get a certain perk of hers going, she becomes absolutely terrifying. The perk I'm talking about is Fame. Fame buffs your combat speed by 4% for every ally you have with you. This means just grabbing 3 random students from the schoolyard will immediately give you a 12% buff. Even though students won't join you if you already have more than 3 people in your party, allies going from investigations will. So people like Carla and Dwayne Johnson will happily join your party no matter the size. And yes, The Rock is in this game because, well, why wouldn't he be? This is another one of those perks you're going to want to re-roll as soon as you hit level 2. Mizuki's second perk is Parting Gift, where every time you let an ally go, a random stat is buffed by 1. This gives even more value to those allies you want to get rid of straight away as they debuff your stats. The third perk is Signed Contract, in which every time you finish a mystery you're given some extra funds. Very handy for if you get injured on your investigations and can use that money to get to the doctor's office to get back to a stable condition. Finally, we have Occult Science, which grants you 5 to 8 XP every time you cast a spell. This is a bit of a weird perk, it's quite nice to have if you're a bit of a spell enthusiast, but you most likely won't be needing to use spells if you've got a whole army behind you making you slice extremely fast. One main use I could think of was with the spell Memory Extract, which costs 10 XP to regain 2 Reason. A couple times we've reduced the cost of the spell overall while still helping restore Reason very easily. Overall, Mizuki is a very slow start, but by the late game she will most likely have an army of followers and be extremely fast in combat. Koji is a reporter who wants to get a good scoop of what's going on. Where you been? Looking for you all morning. Why don't you pay your phone bill? Mad scientist goes berserk and we don't have pictures. Because of this, he starts with a camera, which gives you a plus one to knowledge. Equipping this will bring your perception and knowledge to aid, giving you many options of how you want to build him. Alongside pretty decent strength, Koji is a bit of a jack of all trades, and his perks reflect this. His first perk is Deduction, which gives him 50 XP for finishing a mystery rather than 30, allowing us to level up extremely quickly. Getting this as your first perk can allow you to have very frequent level ups, meaning if your stats are already high, you can spend the level ups to heals instead. His second perk is Fast Hands, which allows him to switch weapons mid-combat. This is a bit of a niche perk, but can be useful if you're running a firearm and run out of ammo, allowing you to quickly switch to a more effective melee weapon. Koji's third perk is Improvise, which allows items thrown in combat to do more damage. While you can normally throw items in combat for a small amount of damage, this perk increases the damage of all items thrown by two. So if you have some spare funds, you can buy a whole load of spare knives to throw at your foes. Another great thing about throwing items is that it costs no combat time at all, allowing you to also smack the enemy at the same time. However, the damage that a throwing object can do is dependent on the item. For example, throwing a cleaver at someone is going to do more damage than throwing a ball. His final perk is Reporter's Bag, which grants him an extra two inventory slots. This can be quite useful combined with Improvise to literally chuck everything you can at the enemy as a last such effort. Overall, Koji is quite a nice all-round character, allowing you to specialise him in most stats. However, due to his balanced stats and lack of powerful perks, he may struggle in the late game. The healing is not as rewarding as the hurting. Mimi is a medical student who is obsessed with eldritch beings, which will, uh, I mean, will never flinch your boat. Due to this, she's also a scalpel and high knowledge, but a curse which lowers her maximum reason by 20%. This makes her a very strong early fighter. However, the lower starting reason may make you a bit more fragile at first. Starting with a weapon also means you can spend your early phones on other stuff such as healing items. Thankfully though, Mimi's perks help you in battle, so you don't take too much damage overall. Fast Learner grants you a small amount of XP every time you get hit. This can be quite handy to level up quickly to either make you more effective in combat or heal yourself up. Second is Anatomy Class, which allows me to do extra damage to human enemies, helping her easily finish up some fights to conserve her stamina and reason. While this seems oddly specific, this perk also opens up some new ways to get other events seasonally, making it a tad more useful. Her final perk is First Aid, which grants me two reason every time she defeats an enemy, allowing her to keep her reason reasonably. Yeah, nah, I'm not doing that joke again. Anyway, why, why would First Aid restore reason in the first place? Shouldn't it need more stamina instead? You can see her literally bandaging her hand in the picture. Like, come on, does she even have a medical license? Overall, Mimi is a bit of a glass cannon to start off. However, by the late game, she'll have plenty of ways to deal with her lower reason, making her a pretty solid fighter in the end. It's so beautiful, but damn! Miku is a bit of a rapscallion who just wants to have a bit of fun while all this old god stuff is going on. You unlock her by beating up a rioter downtown and taking their prescription. Taking this prescription to the pharmacy allows you to purchase an expensive drug for four funds. 
With this, go to the illegal den and you'll find that Miku is the writer who attacked you. She'll then proceed to take the prescription off your hands and help you out in future playthroughs. She's a very interesting character, she starts off with weak stats which will eventually transform into very strong stats thanks to her passive effect of mayhem, which increases her stats the higher the doom level. This makes her very powerful in the late game, but getting to the late game is the real challenge. You could just waste time and increase Doom straight away to make yourself very powerful, but doing so will put you on a very strict time limit to get all the mysteries done. So probably the best way to go about it is to be an absolute coward and rough on most encounters straight away. Then once the Doom is a bit higher and you gain some level, you can start smacking your foes. If Spider Boy is the old god, then it may be a good idea to go to the library and get some spells to fight your foes with instead. As well as stat buffs late game, her perks also allow her to be a lot more dangerous. To start, we have Doom already, which grants Miku one reason every time she fails a skill check. This is very good early on perk to get, as you're most likely going to be failing skill checks all the time thanks to your terrible stats. Second is Adrenaline, which just like Fast Swimmer, grants a permanent combat speed bonus. Also like Fast Swimmer, this is a perk you may want to re-roll to get and it's just very nice to have. A third perk is Losing, which allows you to gain one fund every time you defeat an enemy. This means you can easily build up a sizable amount of cash to purchase healing items and cure injuries with. Finally, we have Pickpocket, which increases the chance of finding items after combat. This combined with Looter can potentially get you two funds after fights, as most items in the game sell for one fund. And if it doesn't sell for a fund, well, just throw it at an enemy for some extra damage. Oh. In conclusion, Miku is a very powerful late game fighter, but the difficulty comes from trying to survive the early game. Yeah. Ignoring her father's warning, she decided to hunt the monster killing the animals to protect this forest, and unknowingly, save the world. Alright, with that cool backstory out of the way, she's also a shotgun. Yep, a literal shotgun, which does 15 damage a shot. If you ever wanted to mess around with firearms in this game, but not known where to start, then this is absolutely the character for you. However, you're going to have to unlock her first. To start, you're going to have to get a level up and take the outdoorsman perk. I'm camouflaged right now. The leaves are covering me to keep me warm at night. Next, keep refreshing your TV in your apartment until you get a report on the missing girl. Finally, keep investigating the forest until you come across a bloody sweater. Now with your outdoorsman perk, you can realise something is seeming a bit... As soon as you pick this option, Mariko will appear and point a shotgun to your head, forcing you to calmly explain what's going on. After this, Mariko will decide to help you and be available in future playthroughs. Right, back to the gun. You will only start the game with two shots in your shotgun, so make sure you use them wisely. And if you are going to use them, keep in mind that shooting a gun will give you ringing ears until the end of the mystery, so it's probably wise to only shoot if you know you are close to finishing a mystery. Also keep in mind that guns aren't as good at smacking your enemies as other weapons are. Combined with Mariko's low starting stats, you're going to be pretty useless early game without ammunition. Don't fret though, leveling up will give you some perks which will help you out in handling a firearm. Her first and probably most important perk is Ammo Stash, which grants you between 1 and 2 bullets at the end of each mystery. Very handy to allow you to keep on shooting. If you run out of ammo and don't have this perk, you can instead spend some funds at the illegal den to get some extra ammo, which, when used, will give you 3 bullets. Mariko's second perk is Daddy's Girl, which gives her 2 stamina at the end of each mystery. This allows you to easily keep your stamina at a decent amount and only have to focus on recovering reason. Finally, we have Deft Handling, which increases the speed of all fire on melee attacks by 20%. This gives you a far better chance to fight back once you're out of ammunition. Overall, Mariko can cause massive amounts of damage in a pinch by shooting her gun, but may struggle in the early game as she runs out of bullets. By the holy light! Finally, we're here. The last playable character, and my god is he a pain to unlock. Firstly, you're going to have to get Ending A in the mystery alarming account of abnormal alarms, and then have the tiny key you get from it in your inventory. Next, investigate the school location until you find some trophy cases. Use the tiny key to get a goblet from them. Now you have to find China, keep investigating different areas until you find another world event, in which you'll get taken to a funky dimension. If you get the one with the pyramid and the sphinx, take the option to fill the goblet with blood. Once out of the dimension, take a sip of the blood and you will unlock Yashiro as well as regain 6 stamina and reason. Yashiro is a very weird character to say the least. First off, he has a unique stat known as Faith, which will buff him or debuff him depending on how high it is. Faith can be increased by defeating enemies, which increases it by 2, or completing mysteries, which increases it by 3. Faith is lost by taking damage in combat at a 1 to 1 ratio. For example, if the enemy hits you for 3 stamina damage, you will lose 3 faith. If the enemy hits for 3 of all damage, you will lose 6 faith. Having higher faith gives you bonuses. If faith is 6 or above, you will get plus 2 maximum stamina and reason as well as plus 1 to dexterity. You will also recover an additional plus 1 to stamina and reason as well as gain an extra 20 XP per mystery. Once faith starts getting lower than 6, you will start to lose these bonuses, and when your faith goes into negatives, these bonuses will become debuffs. Alongside faith, you also start with a crucifix, which allows you to fight ghost enemies normally, as well as a letter which causes you to need 140 XP every level up rather than 100. Thanks to this whole faith mechanic, his perks revolve around him being a bit of a lone wolf and avoiding combat wherever he can, as he is a wholesome Christian fellow with God on his side. His first perk is My Weird Collection, and no, not his collection of D&D &D dice. This perk allows you to collect a random occult item at the end of each mystery. 
You could either use this to your advantage, or treat them like an extra fund at the end of each mystery. Second is on your own, which buffs all your stats by one if you have no allies with you. Faith doesn't count in this regard, but it's still a very strong perk. Next up is Stealth, which grants Yashiro 10 XP every time he flees a battle. Very handy to keep Faith high and still get something out of it. Yashiro's final perk is Zeal, which buffs the damage of all combat moves by one, but lowers his maximum reason and stamina by four. This is essentially a worse version of core strength, and, in my opinion, is not really worth it, as you'll most likely be running for most encounters anyways. Overall, Yashiro is a very unique character who can just skip battles and still get rewarded for doing so. However, he may struggle if the old god is a spider fellow or he's forced into boss fights where he cannot flee. Right, that's pretty much everything out of the way. Time to just wrap up the video now, wait, wait is this a new old god? 